we're going to draw the resonance structures of the carbonate ion CO3 with a minus 2 charge. Now, before we do that, we're going to try to draw the resonant or the Lewis structure to see if we can get going on that. This is a carbon atom surrounded by three oxygens. Carbon brings four valence electrons. I know that because it's in group 14. And oxygen brings six valence electrons each. So if carbon's bringing four, I have three oxygens bringing six each and two extra electrons for the minus two charge. That totals 24 electrons. So the way that I draw Lewis structures when it's only non-metals is to start with a single bond between the central atom and all the surrounding atoms. That accounts for two, four, six electrons. Then I fill the octets on the outer atoms. Each of the oxygens wants eight electrons to be stable. So that's six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24. And that's all the atoms that I'm allowed to use here because I only brought 24 electrons total. So you'll note that the carbon does not have a full octet and carbon absolutely needs a full octet. So the question I have for you is, are we gonna move a lone pair to make a double bond here? Or are we gonna do it from here? Or are we gonna do it from here? The official answer that I wanna hear is technically all three. So let's redraw this with the carbon uh, single bonded to the oxygen on top, double bonded to the oxygen on the bottom left and single bonded to the other oxygen. Now we've still got 24 electrons. We've got a complete octet on all of the atoms. And we've got a double bond between one of the carbons and one of the oxygens. Great, that's a valid Lewis structure for the carbonate ion. But we could have just as easily chosen to make a double bond with that oxygen on the bottom right instead. That one's still single bonded. That one's still single bonded. We could have just as easily chosen to make a double bond with the oxygen on top. Single bonded here, single bonded here. The idea is that rather than this actually being a double bond in two singles, in the carbonate ion form at least, the actual structure is a mix of all three of these. In fact, if you look at the bond length of the carbon-oxygen bonds in carbonate, first of all, they're all the same length. They aren't like some of them being longer, some of them being shorter. And in addition, the length is somewhere in between what a single bond length between carbon and oxygen should be and what a double bond length should be. It's because the actual structure for carbonate is best shown with what we call a resonance hybrid. I'm gonna show you carbon single bonded to each of those oxygens, and then I'm gonna draw in a partial bond between all three of them. Because the actual structure has a bond order of one and a third. There are four bonds being smeared across three different oxygens here. Now, once you start drawing resonance hybrids, it's really tough to uh, figure out where you're gonna put these extra lone pairs of electrons. I tend to just draw some in, like make them all look like they're double. People get the idea. These are the three resonance structures of carbonate, and you can draw them all at once by drawing this, the resonance hybrid. Now, the only other thing I'm doing here is adding in square brackets with the charge in the top right corner. The reason is Lewis structures for ions need square brackets with the charge written. So I'm just going to finish that off here. Oh, I almost went straight over my electrons there. There we go. Now that looks like three resonance structures for carbonate and the resonance hybrid. This is not a valid Lewis structure. This carbon does not have a full octet, and so that is the one that you should not be drawing if you're asked this question. Thanks for being with me. Hope it made sense, and best of luck.